So here I am. The caravan is gone. My leg is crippled. Half my men are dead, and the other half are deserters and traitors. The host be praised. At least I've got the stone shard. If I knew I had to deal with an entire cult of devil knows what, I'd think thrice before getting into the whole mess. I'm too old for an adventure like this. Ah, only I could have a good talk with Gwinnell right now. I'd ask him what the hell is going on. I've been doing this for 30 years, but I've never found myself in such a tough spot. I need to get back to Bryn. I'm not up to going there by myself, so that's why I sent for you. Do you remember how I helped you out back then? Well, time to return the favor. Damn, it's been so long. Tell me, what have you been up to? Welcome. We are us and this. This is an old favorite by the name of Stone Shard. I'm playing this because quite frankly, I'm bored. There hasn't been anything that came out. Not exactly true. There have been things that interested me that I wanted to buy, but I just, I just didn't. Some of them turned out to be flops as I expected that they might. Others continue to look as good as I had hoped they would be. Still, given that it's so late after their release, some of them being in early access, I don't really intend to invest in them until they're actually done again. With it being so long after their release, <clears throat> so long after their release, I figure somebody out there has covered it, and if you're interested in it, they've probably already done it better than I could. So, again, I'm bored. There's nothing really interesting coming out in the foreseeable future, and I am bored. Thankfully. Stone Shard released a major update, and hopefully, I can make some good content off of this. Now, I'm not going to be doing this in the usual way of just playing the game and then uploading it. I'm going to play as much as I feel like I'm able to, and then I'm going to cut out all of the boring bits in between, because there's a lot of wandering in this game. I'm getting all of this out of the way so I don't have to explain myself again later. I don't I don't like having to repeat myself. I'm really not a fan of it. So, again, I'm going to be cutting these videos are probably only going to be recorded up to about an hour and then I'm going to cut as much as humanly possible to get it down to about 30 minutes. So that means <sighs> So that means mostly some fights, well, there's not going to be a whole lot of interesting dialogue anyway, but they have changed quite a bit, so who knows, maybe there will be. Anyway, on to selecting our character. <sighs> now, I've been wanting, usually I go with Jorgrim because he has the ability to deviate between multiple um, what's the word between multiple forms of melee combat but, but I actually think maybe I want to go with two handing this time But do we want a two-hand axes or swords? He doesn't have swords. She has swords, but I have no interest in playing her. Usually I two-handed melee weapons. The last time I played, I was using like a combination of bow and magic. But since they've changed how ranged weapons work, it's likely to be a lot less pleasant. So I'm thinking of going with, again, melee weapons, but 
Because shields are probably going to be a lot less fun than they would have been before they revamped how they worked. So I have to play her in or I, sh I hate that. <sighs> I don't really want to use axes, so maybe maces. They did. They did. <clears throat> change stuns a little bit so that you don't you at least don't get stun locked but since that most likely applies to the AI as well it's probably going to hurt you more than it hurts more than it helps you let's say because I've been stun locked to death before that's not fun I hate that but being able to stun lock the AI as an ex in exchange balance that out, you could say. Unfortunately, now you gain resistance to stuns the more times it happens. Again, for you, that's not going to really help you. You're st If you're getting stun locked, you're still going to die. That's almost guaranteed. Even if you're just facing one enemy, they'll probably absolutely rake you over the coals. Maybe not, but in my experience, it's best to temper your expectations. <sighs> Is that so? Interesting. Anyway, enough pleasantries. It's time to get to work. So here's the deal. I can't walk to Bryn with my leg like this. So unless you plan to carry me, we need a cart. We need horses. We're in luck, though. While you were away, I had a talk with the village elder. We came to an agreement. We'll do a couple of tasks for them, and they'll give us a cart and two horses. A whole two horses? Don't worry about the job. It's nothing special. I don't think you need my advice on how to deal with brigands or the undead. The elder will give you the details. You should go see him right away. No time to waste. Ah, I almost forgot. Here's a map of the area. You need it more than I do. You can also ask the innkeeper about local events. He is a talkative kind. I'm sure he'll answer any of your questions. Off you go then. All right, so. I should probably outline how this game works for those who don't know. Stone Shard is a turn-based RPG survival game. It's... I think it's fair to call it hardcore. Um... I really wish I could compare it to Dark Souls, but I, it, I can't. It's not the same. You're mostly taking care of yourself while wandering through the world, completing tasks to meet the objective as stated by our good friend there. Um... But, you need to take care of keeping yourself... You need to take care of keeping yourself from getting thirsty. Which, I don't know why I bothered to do this. It only progresses as you walk. Each turn is one step. Or one step is a turn. And so your hunger and thirst only progress as you move. And as you see here, the save system is... You can't save everywhere or anywhere. You can only save by resting at an inn or at a camp. And of course the game saves now. The game saves when you exit. So if you run out of time or you're just in some a place where you you can't play anymore but you need to save, you can just leave the game and it'll create a 
it'll create a um, temporary save. That's the thing. It'll create a temporary save that'll be deleted immediately upon loading. So there's that. <clears throat> oh, right. There's also the injury system where you can, well, where you can have, uh, you can be wounded, your bones can be broken, you can be poisoned, you can be injured and start bleeding, and you need items to take, to take care of these things because there's no healing magic because, I mean, why would there be? It's not like there are undead, and it would be useful against them. Anyway. When I first started playing this game, this was sort of bugged, so... Uh, I ended up basically being able to stay at the end infinitely for free, after paying the first time. That, I guess, was fixed sometime later. Probably just go with this one. Now, they've implemented a rumor system, so points of interest no longer show up naturally on the map. They have to be learned from talking to people. I'm not going to sit there, I'm not going to make you guys sit there and read that. But if you were interested in what he had to say, you can, of course, pause it. <clears throat> Again, I'm not going to be going... I'm not going to be doing this for very long. Uh, you know, explaining myself and everything we are going to be doing, how the game works. I expect you to, you know gradually understand as we progress. I better grab this. <sighs> right. They did this too. I need to check my inventory, by the way. See how much gold we have left, because we need food in order to travel. Because the last thing you want is to be caught out without water and without food. Ah, great. In the early game, making money is not very easy. Again, the game hates you, it wants you to die. I'm cool with that. The game is really hard. And I'm actually a fan of that. Not a fan of this as much, but... What can you do? really can't afford to give him money. I also don't remember how much money I have. I didn't actually look. Probably better to just do this rather than starve to death in a goddamn cell. I don't think we've actually rested either. And I need to do that. <clears throat> oh, right. Equipment can also degrade over when used. Weapons become, well, weapons durability wears out, decreasing their stats once they reach a certain point of durability. Same with equipment, their stats become lowered once they take too much damage. The <sighs> goddamn shields. Raise shield activates the following effects. Move resistance, block chance, block power. 
block power is now they I guess sword and board was the was one of the more reliable things that people liked so it got nerfed so now when you're using a shield to block you have what can only be described as block stamina you block an attack you consume some of that stamina not blocking an attack restores some of that stamina if my memory serves and my understanding is correct huh. I don't think it actually eats your stamina which is well this is not stamina this is energy which is sort of the same thing but used for casting spells and uh, I think that's pretty much it anyway what do we want? Wait, we don't have this already. Yeah, that just means they can be selected. Once they're outlined in blue, that's when they're actually... That's when we actually have them. Embodiment of resilience. Each fully blocked attack replenishes max energy and reduces this tree's active cooldowns. Yeah. Receiving a damaging attack grants 5% block power recovery. Now, surely there will be a meter to show you your block power. So you're not just having to guess what it is. <laughs> One can only hope, though. Uh, breakthrough delivers a shield strike to three adjacent targets, spending 20% of your block power, which is weird, because... That's just weird. Why would it consume your block power if you're not actually blocking? That should consume energy. That makes sense. It has a 61% chance to knock affected targets back, right? There's also knockbacks where if you're... Where obviously you know what a normal knockback does, but if someone is up against a wall, which is not going to be very easy because you're going to... Mostly enemies are going to come straight at you, so trying to put them between yourself and a wall in order to knock them into it to stun them means you're going to be eating dick for at least two turns while you move around them to position them between yourself and the wall. By eating dick, I mean naturally taking hits for free while you move into position. This magic you can use, but again, you at least have to spend a turn to cast it before it actually becomes useful to knock them into. Maybe I should consider... I, I'm getting distracted, thinking too far ahead. I do like Moment of Retribution. We should get this. I don't like what they've done with shields, but I'm going to try it out. There goes that. Anyway. <sighs> uh, this is skinning, yeah. I guess that's fine. I tried to... I was about to quick save because... <laughs> because of course I was. <clears throat> Let's see what this guy's got. Goods. Interesting. 
weak points in armor. Uh, what are you selling? He does not have any shields. I will take your finest 100 crowns. Uh, we only have the one lockpick. How much is this selling for? 63? Hmm. We're not going with axes. I wanted to do... I was thinking I wanted to do a spear or play with a spear this time, but maybe not. Also, why does he not have shields? I'll have to kill someone for a shield then. Previously, in the barracks over here, you could get all sorts of starting weapons. Oh, he might have shields, actually. You could get all sorts of start, literally every starting weapon in the game. I suppose I should show you guys. You actually need, well, when you get food, you have to cook it. Again, this is a survival game. When you, oh, these used to be barracks before. See, these are outlined in red now, so it'd be stealing. Anyway, let me finish my original thought. When you get food, you need to cook it or it spoils. Well, or it spoils quickly. Once you've cooked it, it's still going to spoil. That's just the way it is. But things like this that are smoked will actually, well, as you can see, not spoil over time. And you then, depending on the size of it and such it can actually be eaten in parts I suppose and this only has two two uses left <sighs> right I did skip the prologue of the game as well Now, as I was saying before, the prologue, right? The prologue of the game is interesting, and I presume they haven't changed much about it, so I'm not going to worry about that. I'm actually going to, probably at the end of the video, put the... Uh, I, don't I don't remember what it's called. It's a stupid name. Anyway... At the end of the video, I'm going to try and remember to put up a previous video where we actually played through the prologue. The mic audio won't be as clear or loud, I suppose is more accurate, as it should be, well, as it is now, but hopefully... Rumors. And since they haven't actually implemented a stealth system yet, basically anytime you take anything, everyone's going to know because of course they are. I mean, it's not like you could, if someone catches you stealing something, you can just kill them and then not be a thief anymore, because that would make sense and eventually you'd wipe out entire villages, but, well, I mean, that's We didn't actually look at what he had, did we? That's too much money for right now. Identification, right. 
sometimes there are unique weapons where you can actually get in there. There are sometimes unique weapons you can find that you need to identify in order to be able to use. They usually have better effect. Well, they're usually enchanted or have curses on them that make them more useful than normal weapons, but don't don't really expect to see any of those. Hmm. Wait. Do we have... Yeah, we do have the ability to use maces, but no, no, we don't actually. Maybe we should do... Well, it depends on what books we find as we go, huh? What is the button? Thirst. Not thirsty. Hardly hungry. Yeah, I'm going to just... Rather than explain these, I'm going to hover over them so you guys can pause and read what they do. genuinely don't actually think we're ready to go just yet. Right, I should save. God, I still hate the movement in this game. I mm, think I should talk to him while I'm thinking about it. That's right, we have to come all the way back here to save. Looks like it might be nighttime. That is an awkwardly long load time. Try to use the S key to go down. Hmm. This is the tailor shop where you usually go to sell furs and buy certain clothing items. If you're looking for armor, the blacksmith is the guy. I'm probably going to be doing heavy armor this time because we can't actually depend on shields. But right now, I don't have the money. This is where, this is the apothecary's house. That's where you get, well, potions and things to cure poisons. You can also, this seems to be okay to take. You can also take, or well, pick plants as you go, which, as you can see here, have effects. This will increase your thirst by 30%, but increase your resistance to intoxication, which can be inflicted by this and it increases the rate at which you restore health and I guess the efficiency of healing items I don't really know <sighs> frankly I don't even want to leave this place it's uh, it's dangerous out there 
Find a bottle of brandy. That's, yeah, what we got from the drunkard we just spoke to. Right, where are we actually supposed to be going? And we actually need to go this way. We need to go south and then... No, not south. West and then north. No. So, before we actually get started with the fighting, I would like to make a bit of a point about getting rid of that. As you travel, you can pick up things like this that allow you to continue on a little longer. Like, as you see here, I have a ton of berries and a good portion of them are missing because they restore hunger, well, reduce hunger and thirst. I also have these plants here, which are the most important ones. This for bleed resistance and reduction of intoxication. This one for injury treatment, bleed resistance, health replenishment, all of these are really good. And burdock for reducing intoxication and health restoration and healing efficiency. Make sure that if you're playing this, those are the ones you pick up primarily. Of course, you can't carry that much thanks to really limited inventory system, but I digress. We're currently in the middle of a fight. They've lost track of me. They could hear me, that's about it. Now, this is probably difficult for you guys to see as well. I think I managed to lure out only one. Cudgel won't be worth much. Now, in order to restore my health, I could just walk around for a few turns, and as you saw there, the energy went back up, but there's also a better way. Of course, this carries the risk that someone can sneak up on you and get a free hit on you before you actually see them. And as you also may have seen, my maximum health was reduced, which happens, especially as injuries begin to pile up. Got us a rich guy. What do you take me for? Okay, let's do this. Hopefully I can kill him before the other guy gets here. minor hand injury. <sighs> Let's see. At least we're not bleeding. That would suck. Not even worth carrying because it'll sell terribly. Let's see. What do we have? Mm. Wait, is that the right one? Use on a selected body part. Yeah, it should. My, 
minor wounds like this will gradually go away, but there's also the possibility that, depending on how severe they are, they may actually get worse. Or make things worse as time progresses. There it is. Okay. That is a heck of a find. Is that equipment? Even though it says that it's valued at 139 crowns, it's not. That's a lie. You can also attack stuff like this to break it, but keep in mind that it's wearing out the durability of your weapon ever so gradually, as it does. Let's go ahead and take the milk, because, I mean, why wouldn't there be a jug of milk? Right, the lockpick. I can also just, rather than use a lockpick on a door that's locked, I can just smash it. Which is probably the wiser choice. I should have something for doing that, as a matter of fact. Which, I would swap... Nope. But, there we go. Now I can use this. Hmm. And it didn't affect the, the axes durability all that badly. But someone may have heard it, so we should be careful. Like this guy. There we go. And... This will give me, I'm gonna, uh, I typically use bottlenecks like this to control how many enemies can actually fight me at a single time. But for now, it's not really necessary. Frick, what are, I'm not the one that's supposed to open the door. That gives him a turn to do what he wants. The idea is to have him open the door so I get the free attack. There we see me nearly die. You can go ahead and expect that to be the norm. Uh, there we go. Hey there, buddy. Oh, skill books. We have Combat Mastery 1. We actually already have that. Combat Mastery. Seize the initiative. Yeah, we already have that, so we don't need to actually consume that book. Staffs? We're not using that, but it is level 3. That's going to be some good coin. If we can get back home alive. Art of Strategy. Let's just take that, and then we can see. Uh, I think it was this one. Ah, 
Ah, it's Combat Mastery. That's why I couldn't find it. Now, you can still sell a book that you've read, but according to memory, if you read the book, it sells for less. Maybe I'm wrong and I'm or I'm misremembering. Anything's possible. Identified spirit. Get out of here. One of them, one of them closed the door and the other broke it. I'm trying to lure out one at a time. Okay, so we've managed. Uh, uh, we've managed to lure out just the boss, which is good. So, I only lured one out successfully, thankfully, because it's easier to just fight one at a time and then rest in between. Okay, so we got a level off of de dealing with that. Uh... I like Warcry. Intimidation. Warcry gains 50% chance to daze or confuse infected enemies for two to three turns. The character's actions have 25% stronger effect on the enemy's will to fight. So we'll have to do it this way. I would just bide my time until we can do that again. No. If I go above him, he'll try to go into this corner. And then I end his life. The lumberjack axe is junk. Battle cleaver junk as well. I have discovered that, okay, when equipment is damaged like this, it can be repaired. You don't have to throw it away. But you have to pay to have it repaired by someone who specializes in that equipment type. Armor, you typically want to go to the blacksmith and clothing items. 
like this, you typically want to take to the tailor, who I showed you before we left, well, whose location I pointed out before we left. This thing only has four protection, but it might sell decently. So depending on how well it sells, well, what it sells for versus what it costs to repair, given that its durability is really low, we'll have to play it by ear. All right, ladies and gentlemen, that is going to do it for us today. I'm going to head back to the entrance and try to watch out for traps so I don't die like an idiot. But I hope you guys have enjoyed yourselves and everything you've seen here. We'll be back with... I don't know when we'll be uploading another episode of this, but I do want to keep playing it, so we'll see. Is that fair? Uh, frankly, I do enjoy the game. I may complain about this and that here and there, but ultimately, I've played the game for probably about 60, 69 to 70 hours now. So it's definitely worth playing and I do enjoy it. But that doesn't mean it's free from criticism, I'm just saying. Now, to keep the outro from being too long, I'm going to, well, send you guys on your way right now. Again, I don't know when we'll be uploading another episode of this, but there will be more. Mostly because I just want to see how the build I'm going for will ultimately shake out. And so with all that said, we will see you next time.